I would like to start with a small differentiation. We heard lots of words of uncertainty, disturbances, and disruption. And when you're talking with me, uncertainty, it's okay. I know everything about it. If you come to disturbances, it's somehow I know like weather, I know how much it will impact myself, but I do not know when it happens, how long it happens, and the severity, and then it comes to disruption. And disruption is totally in aviation, totally handled differently because then it comes to contingency procedures. So I personally would like not to mix up all these words. So um, let's give it a try. When I go to AI, I, I really come back to this kind of, uh, of, um, of wording. Four weeks in a lab saves you one day in a library. I found so many data scientists, they tell that this, they found some inefficiency in aviation and they uh, have very severe concerns about it. And I said, yo, um, the problem is that's not output, that's input. We call it holding, and it was built into by purpose. So sometimes we have to be really careful what we are seeing and what we try to think what it is. So when you go for CESAR, uh, then you see that CESAR, the single sky European initiative in ATM research, then you say they didn't have any problems they are very proud of it. They have already solutions working on it. So coming back to these guys here, okay, you know what you're dealing with. And they identified so many topics in, in, in aviation. We have to stick in the future and we can focus on into the future. And I personally like to choose the airport itself. Um, why I was showing on the next slide, but I want to address somehow Daniel presented something in the air. So we are close to the airport. We try to arrive. Uh, Ramon just showed us the ADF-CM, the Air Traffic Flow and Capacity Management, so the aircraft is somehow here. Uh, then we heard that somehow, sometimes the aircraft six hours ago is not even started, so it's somehow on the other airport, not showing here, far away. And if we have this uh, turnaround by, by name, so I have to go with the aircraft six times a day to another airport and coming back to me, I have some variables I can control on my airport and I have some other variables I can't control. So why I choose the airport? Uh, when you see this very small diagram, you can see just this one, one message. First of all, the delay de increases in our system. Why it comes? The capacity is somehow at the same level, but the number of aircraft operating increases. So if you know, if, let's just go to the autobahn. Yeah, if more and more cars coming, you will see there's a jam. So there's uh, only one way. You have some kind of deep peaking. You are going with your car when nobody's on the street, or you build some more capacity. So building an airport uh, or even increase an airport, I should not say too much as a German, but it's complicated to build a new concrete, but it's also co complicated to make more airspace available for operations. Yeah? So um, when you see this, and this is the only thing I want to show you, when the aircraft is on operation, it's not a problem from my perspective because then you have deviations of five minutes. Yeah, because the aircraft, when it's fly, it flies, it has to land, so it's somehow defined. But when it goes for airport operation, it's, easily, it's easy to disturb the whole process. And um, just take this kind of picture. When I'm starting with uh, the aviation community, one of the old guys from Serbia told me, show an uh, aircraft first and then I talk about passengers. So this is my aircraft. But now I will come to the non-experts uh, dealing with the airport operations. We call them passengers. So when you try to disturb in flight, it's very easy as a passenger to do so. So we have one aircraft and in this case we have 500 as other passengers. So the trajectory at the airport ground is not only driven by the, by the aircraft itself or by experts, it's also driven by non-expert, but how to control passengers. It's not that easy. So my first contact with the I came when I'm looking for some kind of uh, passenger behavior and I tried to find out how passengers behave over time. So uh, I can't control the sequence. Lufthansa did it. Uh, we see so many things uh, coming up and they always try to, this is the right sequence. We have to make a pre-sorting, but honestly for A380, just make a bet how, how convenient it is to pre-sort 550 people in one line, in one sequence. So, sorry, it will not work. So the other way, if you cannot work, we are asking ourselves if there's a chance, not control, but even determine how the process will be reliable. At which time I could uh, think about, will it take a 10 minutes or 20 minutes or 100 minutes? So it's important, and we learned from Ramon, that the uh, target takeoff time is somehow related with the, with the turnaround processes. Yeah, and what we did is, uh, first of all, we have this kind of seat load factor. So we see when the aircraft is empty and the aircraft is full, we first 
invent some kind of uh, complexity measurement. How complex is a boarding procedure? Just imagine uh, one third of the passengers will be sitting in an the aircraft. There are two solutions you can imagine. One, all the sitting on the window, and the other one, they are sitting on the aisle. And you will see this one is very complex, and the one is very less complex. Yeah, what I want to show you is somehow uh, we developed some, oh, I can see it here, but not there. Um, we developed some, some uh, complexity measures. We say somehow the, the convergent of the complexity measures and the quality of the queue. And then we say, okay, somehow the, we can uh, have a good picture about it. If you have fast boarding or slow boarding, this clearly uh, are dividable. And if we can do so, then we use a, a long short-term memory approach because this is kind of time series. I think you know most of it. Then we choose a time window and then we try to, to somehow predict so, and we go for the first 400 seconds and we make stop and then we say, okay, if we see this kind of, of uh, picture now, can we, can we estimate how fast boarding is? And the LSTM works pretty nice, we can do. So first of all, going for aircraft operation, we start with the passenger, everything was no, not perfect, but we can somehow predict the passenger behavior. But it's um, not only the passenger behavior. Now our, our passengers are in the aircraft and uh, it's one prominent part I mentioned. And the other part is when dealing with weather and aviation. So weather always come in, in negative forms. So it's uh, somehow will not support us with, he with headwind. Okay, it will support us, but with tailwind, with sidewind, uh, with low visibility condition, with rain, with freezing conditions, all the things you can imagine that lowers our capacity. And okay, it's an easy step. Uh, if the weather somehow getting more severe, we get problems with the capacity. So there is a, there is a, a relationship between, and what we are did, we're taking all the weather mes messages and try to find out how these weather managers would impact the airport performance. So there was an easy step Eurocontrol provided years ago, some called the, the ADMAP algorithm. ADMAP just is a, is a measurement of expert, and they say if you have this kind of weather, we can translate it to, I would call it aviation weather, with a level of severity. And then we have this kind of weather index and then we have the performance. And what we did, try to find a good correlation in between. So here you can see a very small weather impact and you see some delays coming. You see Frankfurt, Air, I think Frankfurt or Gatwick. I didn't get it, let's call it Gatwick. Um, and then we see the impulse coming uh, two hours later. And then we have a very high impact of weather and then you can see the impact comes two hours, three hours later, but then you have a specific behavior. And now it's also set, we have some data and then we can try to find out if there's a chance that we can anticipate the airport performance uh, when just seeing the weather data or, and the flight plan. <laughs> And what my PhD student was doing, uh, hopefully he will define, uh, defend in the next two months, he somehow see, okay, I have a delay, I have a different of flights uh, between um, demand and, uh, and actuals, and then he tried to, to um, bring in some, some clusters, and then he tried to find a method how to uh, predict this kind of clusters. And he was doing uh, the LSTM, convolutional networks, convolutional LSTM, all the things he bring together and try to somehow um, working on this. I just write down the, the paper here. Um, you can see on my LinkedIn account uh, the paper as well, so if you're interested in. So we are now having from the passenger, now we can handle somehow the weather and the performance. And then I also raised some question uh, from the auditorium. So it's, uh, we have to deal with this kind of environment. So the aircraft is somehow in the middle, but there are so many stakeholders, so many players bringing them together. And even if the airliner have a good idea, because they have some machine learning experts and you go for the ground handler, they have some experts as well. There's so much experts. And now we learn from the, uh, from the network manager itself, Eurocontrol have some experts as well. And all they think, they're thinking about what is in there for us. But lots of, uh, of um, the factors they, didn't, they cannot control, they just take it external. So sometimes it's easy to make a, a rough call and say, okay, can you help me? Yeah. From the ACDM, the uh, Airport Collaborative Decision Making, they didn't see the trajectory as a flying thing, they just see it as a time series. Yeah, you say the flight is near to the airport, it's landed, it's on the apron, it's on the gate, and something like this. Uh, what we did, Okay, I just jump over because of the time, but you can, you can see here, there's, um, I will not jump over. Uh, you have some target times on the gate. You want to push back your aircraft and you see the gate somehow will be at, uh, um, at the runway. And then the ATC come and say, okay, I want to see you on the runway at this given time. Because when you tell me this, I will have a slot for this. And then I calculate some target times to start. Yeah, this is a very easy procedure. And then I can try to deal with this. So this is a common process, ACDM. It's just a very small word, but when you try to implement it on the airport, it costs you roughly two and a half million per, uh, when you try to install and 100, 200,000 per year to make it run. So when you go to small airports, they say, no, there's no way for it. 
So um, our idea was, okay, uh, which data we have and can we somehow anticipate this, uh, this kind of uh, collaborative decision making? Yes, we can. Each aircraft somehow has to provide some data. They call it the automatic dependent civilian broadcast. So if you have a Raspberry Pi and a very small uh, receiver, it costs you 100 bucks. You can receive the messages from the aircraft itself by your own, and then you can make some kind of a management system. They will not like you because you see how they act. And when you come as a researcher in there and say, okay, that's your behavior, and then you say, oh, uh, yeah, it's... Not that what we want to push in, but it's uh, the way we go for further. So we analyze a lot of these data. We see some some shortcomings because the data are not that accurate. So we have to lot, do lots of pre-processing working on this. But a very first approach, we just can rebuild this kind of uh, milestone approach I showed you before. So for Zurich example, we can sh say the aircraft is somehow out. The aircraft is on the final. The aircraft is landed. And we can make some assumption about the whole turnaround itself, even not talking to one expert at this stage. So yeah, we can make um, all these uh, nice pictures of showing you the, the trajectories on the ground. Uh, we can show you uh, how an aircraft uh, airport behaves. Here you can see there are operational hotspots, a lot of aircraft coming in, then you can make some anticipation when this aircraft will come through this joint, this aircraft will come into the joint. You can start about some safety measures and all the things and uh, it's easily come out of the ADSB data. So uh, we have a paper about it so you can read it. So lots of problem come that we didn't know this source so if you receive data from the aircraft yes the aircraft sent the data but you didn't know the source it could be that they use gps data it could be that the data come off their their initial inertia system so it's uh, five or six sources they can send you the data and these somehow have not the same level of accuracy okay passenger airport capacity <laughs> moving on the ground last but not least when you go for the whole airport operations I can uh, jump to the ADFM, to the flow management guys as well. When you try to arrive at an airport, for example, Zurich, it's not even saying I'm coming from the north. When you're coming from the north, there are several ways. So we use all these uh, dimensional reduction, clustering approaches, you know. So we try to find out, okay, which kind of trajectory they will choose, how many time they will, they will have, uh, which kind of input factors are in there. So we're dealing with this topic. So you see, we extend it somehow. We're starting with the passenger, so we go to the network. We land from the network, the network coming down to the airports. Uh, one very typical thing is when you go for a runway, you can see here, if you try to land, I think this was Vienna. There's a runway exit, there's a non-runway exit, and there's a last exit. From the terms of capacity, you're always interested is the airport be, will be able to take the first one, the second one, or the last one. It's called runway occupancy time, and if the aircraft is too long on the runway, it could be if you have the separation distance, the next one has to start around. Yeah, so it's somehow not only a safety, but a capacity feature as well. So uh, with some research, researchers from Eurocontrol, uh, with Flores Herma, uh, we make some analysis of, uh, I think this was Vienna as well, to make some clustering approaches, to make some uh, random forest, if there's a chance, at which chance, and can it help to improve the capacity management at all. And finally, last but not least, you can see you can start easily when you go for the ground trajectory just for the positions. So it's easy to come out. You can see all the nice pictures, but it's sometimes uh, trajectories are not the same because they're choosing the same way, but they take one, 10 minutes or half an hour. Yeah? If they're looking the same, it's not looking the same. Looking the same means you have to have some kind of speed indexing in as well. So it's getting somehow multidimensional. Okay, I think I get three minutes. <laughs> so it's uh, just setting the scene, what we are dealing with. So you see there are lots of topics to address, there are lots of data coming in. When Lufthansa come with booking, we're thinking about, okay, can we have them? Uh, what is about cancellations or they will in, uh, influence as well? You can see several uh, horizons of dealing with the kind of problems. So thank you.